Moving Forward by Angelitine Latin. You need to set some healthy boundaries for yourself, Mr. Stark. Looking at the spider kid who was carefully rewrapping his wounds, Tony sighed ruefully. For some reason, no, Rodi, it isn't fatherly instincts. Rodi had, Tony had gotten himself attached to the kid. Quite frankly, Peter Parker was brilliant. The boy's mind was as quick as a whip, easily understanding the ins and outs of whatever he was reading. It was something he found out one day. One day, Peter had gotten lost in the tower. Tony had been patiently waiting for the kid in his lab. Sue him. He was excited. It wasn't every day he had someone who was equally as interested in robotics and literally anything that moved as himself. When he realised that Peter had kept him waiting for around an hour already, Tony suddenly remembered that vow he had told himself in the confines of the lonely Stark mansion when he was a child. People hurt you. Except Tony didn't really expect this out of the resident angelic being, Peter Parker. And it hurt more than he cared to admit. Perhaps it was because he had gone through betrayal after betrayal. But Tony didn't really think there would be any other situations that came into play. It was only after he asked Friday whether she thought Peter would actually come, did he find out the real situation. Peter had arrived ten minutes before the meeting time and had promptly gotten himself lost. After that, he wandered around the tower until finally he arrived at the R&D department. Finding interest in the writing room on the blackboard, Peter had taken to erasing some of the department's mistakes and solving the problem in ten minutes flat. Then Peter couldn't leave because the interns were asking for advice, which, now that Tony looked more closely at the CCTV, looked like borderline harassment. In the end, Tony had made his way to the R&D department and visited the lab the kid was in and found one Peter Parker solving the one problem the department had been had had for the past three months, took one look at his kid and awarded him with an internship. If that allowed Peter to go in and out and work with Tony in his lab as much as he wanted, which in the process made the lab feel just a bit less lonely, then that was just a plus. Still, Tony knew that the kid was brilliant. Hell, he saw his brilliance nearly every day, since he woke up from the coma. That, however, didn't explain why the kid was currently telling him to create boundaries. Tilting his head questioningly, Tony asked, What exactly do you mean by that, kiddo? Staring at him with a deadpan tone, Peter gave it to him in black and white. Telling him indirectly didn't work at all. It means to stop taking everyone's bullshit. Startled by the kid's use of profanity, Tony opened his mouth to speak, but was interrupted when Pepper walked into the room, closing the door behind herself. I couldn't agree more, Peter. Moving closer, she kissed Tony on the forehead as a greeting and continued. In fact, I came here to talk about just that, except Peter beat me to it. You need to distance yourself from the Avengers, Tony. I looked at the financial records we had the past week. It didn't add up at all. Naturally, I had Friday hack into their private servers and found the real reports. Sighing tiredly, Pepper took a seat beside Peter, who had first finished applying the bandage and displayed a hologram from her Stark pad. They have been using your money, your resources, for years now. I don't know how it slips through, but literally everything. From the gear, to the mission, to the collateral, hell, even Rogers' diet has been put under your name. Spitting out the word contemptuously, Pepper said, they've been using us, Tony. Hearing her words, Tony vaguely remembered wondering why he kept making the team new gear on nearly every mission. The only exception being Wilson, who was surprisingly careful with the gear Tony provided him. At the time, he had brushed it off, telling himself he was thinking too much of it. Now he realised he should have looked into it further. Still, Tony had been relying on those people for years now. He knew it wasn't good for him, but he didn't know what else to do. Sighing, he replied, I know, but I just don't know how to go about it. Putting in his two cents, Peter suggested, Well, you can ditch your phone, for one. If you really were their source of money, which you are, 
I'd say Fury would call to try to get you to come back. Staring at the kid weirdly, Tony replied, You know that I can't help myself when it's tech, Pete. He really couldn't. Tony was a curious person. Technology was interesting. How could Tony just not if it was right there? Looking between the two, Pepper made a suggestion. Why don't you give your phone to Peter for the time being? You won't be using Friday as communication too much because you're still injured and could still work in the lab, but communication, especially to the outside world, would be cut off. Rhodey moved into the tower recently anyway. Think of it as a social media detox. That was a surprisingly good idea. She was right, as always. Without his phone, the only messages and or calls he'd receive would be from people he deliberately wanted to talk to. Being Iron Man was put on the back burner for the time being anyway. He'd just have to hang out with Rhodey while he's doing his rehab or tinker with Peter. It'd be good for him, hopefully. Still, Tony knew the type of people who called him on a day-to-day -day basis on his phone. There were still requests for meetings, read-throughs, SI-related stuff as well. As well, Nick Fury. It wasn't going to be easy handling Tony's phone. Especially, essentially, Peter would be coming a stand-in for Tony Stark. Or at the very least, Tony's point person in the company. But as if sensing the reason behind his hesitation, Peter chimed in. I'm working as your point person for a while now anyway, Mr. Stark. This will just sort of make it official. It's fine with me. Seeing the kid's lack of hesitation, Peter made up his mind. Friday, grant primary access to Peter Parker. Grant him override functions to Pepper Potts. Action confirmation. Code 1 Romeo 0 November Charlie Alpha November. Primary access granted to Peter Parker. Override functions granted to Pepper Potts. Thanks, baby girl. I think I need to distance myself from tech for the next two weeks anyway. So I'll leave Friday in your care, under Roos. Nodding at Tony's decisiveness, Pepper felt that now was the moment to talk about her plans. Let's talk about the rest. Seeing both Peter, whom she would definitely become as she felt would definitely become SI's heir in the future, and therefore would need to participate in this conversation, and Tony, who gave her thoughts on Peter's solid confirmation wordlessly nod. She continued. Peter's performance as SI's first high school intern is promising. I've been looking into it. Why not establish a high school internship program for every branch of SI? What do you guys think? Switching into his SI take no bullshit attitude, Peter told her his thoughts. The program was designed for himself was good, admittedly. But it wasn't going to cut it if they really wanted to nurture high school students. I think that we'd need to make a few tweaks, but overall I think it's a really solid idea. Discussing it for the next two hours, Tony looked at the two people beside him, discussing their future. This was what he wanted. The type of companionship and teamwork that he never got to experience with the old team, Sans, Bruce and maybe Thor. Thinking on the subject, Tony remembered the man who had visited him in a wheelchair three days ago. Dr. Charles Xavier. Making up his mind, Tony opened his mouth and said, I want to establish a new Avengers initiative. Phoning the guy was surprisingly easy. They had talked for what seemed like days, but was really just two short hours. Tony, honest to God, felt like working with a man like Charles Xavier and the school he heads would be good for him. Hell, for the first time in a while, he was excited. By the end of the month, They'd gotten into contact with superheroes and mutants all over the world. This wasn't just to ensure the public's trust in superheroes didn't falter. It was also to ensure that the mutants' rights would be safe and respected, with clear boundaries and consequences. It would revolutionise heroism. Essentially, they'd establish new Avengers bases in multiple places around the world and employ different skilled individuals while training the rookies. On a normal rotation system and normal groups, it would ensure that the heroes didn't burn out and spread themselves too thin trying to save the entire world. After three months, he presented the document to the UN together with 
docked Professor X and King T'Challa. It was an unanimous decision. Accepted. Now there was one last thing to do. Tony wasn't exactly looking forward to it either. So for the first time in five months, Tony asked Peter for his phone and called one dreaded contact, Nick Fury. Stark, Fury calls out in the middle of the meeting room, his usual tone, thinly veiled contempt, evident. I called you 15 times. Normally, Nick Fury was someone Tony took pleasure in pissing off. Really, he did. He had tried so hard to make the guy talk in pirate, but alas, the guy was a killjoy through and through. Right now, though? Right now, he truly didn't know what to do. He had given his phone at full control of Friday for the first two weeks, which would most likely be the time that Friday would try to contact him most, to Peter and to override functions to Pepper. Tilting his head, Tony answered with a questioning tone, glancing at Peter beside him for a brief moment. I don't have my phone. Don't bullshit me, Stark. Everyone knows you're the billionaire. You always have some type of technology on you. Coughing into his hand, Tony replied, making the whole room remember that he was severely injured in the process. <clears throat> Actually, I don't. Gave my phone and Friday and literally everything techie I have to Peter Parker over here, just so you know. Staring directly at the man and wordlessly communicating the threat, he is my only and favourite intern. Taken aback by Tony's behaviour, Nick Fury's mind began to race. He knew what Tony was implying. For the long years since Tony had been openly admitting his identity as Iron Man, there hadn't been a single incident in the first few, after the first few years where anyone in his inner circle was openly targeted. He had to give props to the man. He knew how to protect his own. If this was the very same man that had specifically implied that this kid, Peter Parker, was one of his own, then he would have to tread carefully. Turning his eye to the boy, Nick let out one of his, of his most powerful assets as a super spy, Aura. He was a man who had been in this type of business for years now. At this point, even cold-blooded Murdoch didn't faze him. As one of the top spies in the world, this specific asset allowed him to extract information from even the most dangerous of criminals. How could this kid compare? Yet, curiously, this kid didn't even seem phased by the mounting pressure in the room. Getting impatient, Nick questioned the child, injecting some venom into his tone. I called you 15 times. But how could Peter, who had been working as the web-slinging vigilante for what would be a year and a half now, who had dealt with crimes big and small with nothing but in but pyjamas and some homemade web shooters, back down from this? Please, this guy looked scary because of the eye patch. Wade was way worse. Casually reclining into his chair, Peter made a direct eye contact with the spy and said, And I watched it ring. Fifteen times. Behind him, Rhodey snorted. This kid was hilarious. Tilting his head as if not knowing, as if knowing that Nick couldn't do a thing without the funding given by Tony Stark, and thus couldn't make any moves right now, as he was under Tony's protection, Peter continued challengingly. What are you going to do about it? Around the room, the other superheroes who had already signed the first batch of the new Avengers smiled fairly. They all knew that Peter Parker was insanely protective of Tony Stark, probably a result of seeing him nearly bleed to death out in Siberia all those months ago. When it came to protecting his mental, all Peter's manners went out the window. Grinning positively feral, Peter settled in. This was going to be satisfying. And as Tony looked around the meeting room at the people he'd slowly gotten to know over the months of writing, revising and fighting and laughing, Tony couldn't help but feel blessed. He had started out as a lonely, egotistical genius. But look at him now. He had someone he considered a son, 
a woman he married just last month, and people he was starting to treat as family. He understood. Tony wasn't alone anymore. He had people he'd die for, and a total contrast to the lonely months and years he had spent caged in his own little bubble in a team he couldn't really call his own. He now had people who'd die for him too. Damn. So this is what that song Peter loved meant. Started from the bottom, now he's here. End of story. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you enjoyed this. That was actually really fun. Like, I'm properly enjoying this. Peter not being phased by um, Nick Fury. I'd pay to see that, but of course, what can you do? Remember to like, comment and subscribe and check me out on Twitter as well. Hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or weather time zone you're in. Bye my guys, gals and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Bye!